Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network invite you to discover your mission. A brand new in-depth monthly video series featuring engaging Catholic speakers who will challenge you to live your life abundantly. For only $25 a month, you will receive a personal monthly mission, including three full-length inspirational talks that build upon a new theme each month. Sign up for the Discover Your Mission tier at patreon.com slash Patchwork Heart Ministry today. Fiat Ministry Network and Patchwork Heart Ministry present Journeys in Faith. Now, here's Andy Santis. Hi, welcome to Journeys in Faith with Andy Santis here on this Friday evening. It's great to be here with you on this evening. And I am so glad that you're here with us because I have an amazing guest. I have Amy Brooks. She is a wife, a mom, and the founder of Prayer, Wine, Chocolate, and also Catholics Online. You definitely want to check out those two awesome websites and social media presence. So, Amy, thank you so much for joining me here on Journeys in Faith. Thank you, Anne. I'm so happy to be here. This is great. <laughs> it is. And we're Hi, friends. <laughs> yeah. You've been a guest with me more than once. Uh, of mm -hmm. course, you were a guest on the podcast that's also associated with this uh, Facebook page. It's called mm -hmm. Sewing Hope. So you were a guest with me and Bill Snyder and also on my former TV uh, online show called The Positive Side. So I encourage yeah. people to to check that out if you want to watch those previous episodes. So okay. Amy, <laughs> as we do many, many times, I mean, the name of the show, right, <laughs> is Journeys in Faith. So I thought you could start out with just telling us about you and your journey. Sure. Um, so my name is Amy Brooks, and um, I have been, I'm a cradle Catholic. You know, I've been Catholic my whole life. I went to Catholic school. Um, I grew up in Philadelphia and went to Catholic grade school, high school, and then I continued to Catholic college. I even got my master's degree from a Catholic university. So um, that's always been a part of my life. Um, my family went to church together every Sunday. We were, um, I was the oldest of five, and I remember when I was in like eighth grade, my dad would walk us up to the front pew. <laughs> <laughs> we were all sit in the front pew, I think because I had younger brothers and sisters, I guess. Um, and I always, you know, valued prayer. I even remember at a young age wondering if I was praying correctly, like what I was supposed to think about when I prayed. Was I supposed to think about the words or, you know, I remember being that young and, and thinking about prayer. Um, so I've always like embraced my faith. I found it very interesting, interesting and fascinating. When I was younger, like, you know, all through grade school, I was friends with um, someone who, her family was born again Christian. So we often discussed, like, we both were very, you know, in love with Jesus, but um, we also had conversations that were pretty interesting for 13-year-olds to, to have, you know, the differences between a Catholic and a born again Christian and things that we maybe didn't agree on. And later in life, when I graduated from college, she, she her and I were roommates. So the, the friendship and, and the conversations continued. And those conversations led me to really dive into, well, am I Catholic because I was born Catholic? Or am I Catholic because that that is what I'm su supposed to be? So I, I discovered this apologetics and um, which is Defending the Faith, and I found like a book that was actually written for high school students, and I read that. It was called a, um, 
Philadelphia Catholic in a King James Court. Yeah, and I am familiar with that book. Oh, it's it was so good because where I was, I couldn't have read like I still have never read Scott Hahn. I hear he he's great, and but this was at a level that I felt like I could understand. And um, even all those years of, of Catholic school, we never really did apologetics. I don't know why. I don't know why. Or maybe they did it and it just kind of went over my head. So um, that book was fascinating. And, um, and so I just, I was very interested in that. And then I, I, as I discovered more about our faith, I fell in love with it more. But then I went through a dark time. I was very depressed. And my faith was like my parachute. Like I. I, I, um, I started prayer journaling and that allowed me to like pour my heart out to God in, in a very intimate way. And I feel like, um, those years helped me strengthen my faith. And, um, you know, um, when, I, when I was single, that's why I was depressed. <laughs> I was single. Mm. I, I looked and hoped and prayed for a man that valued our faith, like my Catholic faith. So, and I, I did find that, you know, that man and um so our faith is something we we share in common in our in our mar- marriage and our journey in life and um so we also battled infertility which can be um a, a spiritual battle as well you know you uh, god called me to this life this vocation of marriage and now i can't have children it was it can be confusing and it can be scary and it can be very emotional but we have always put, you know, our faith um, in everything. You know, whenever anything bad happens, we go to God. You know, and hopefully, when the good stuff happens, we thank Him. So that um, that journey of infertility led me to start blogging because we adopted our son, and I quit my job. I was a Catholic school teacher, <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, then we wanted to adopt again, but I don't know, you know, how many people are familiar with adoption. It's very expensive. So I stopped working, but we felt called to grow our family. So I thought, let me, you know, God will find a way is basically what I believed and God showed me. Yes, I will find a way. And here are twins. So then we adopted twins. Yes. So God has shown his abundance. You know, it, it's pretty neat to be uh, it's pretty neat to be over 40 in a way because you can look back and and see you know that country song there was jesus there there he was you know there was jesus he was there the whole time so um my faith brings me comfort brings me joy gives me guidance and um i don't know how people live without it to be honest yes. so um here we are i you know where are we now now i really enjoy the um finding other inspiring Catholics and telling the world about them. And um, when I discover Catholic ministries, like one you're very familiar with, St. Raymond Nonaltus. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Like uh, there's so many great ministries. And when I find these ministries, I love to um, tell the world about anybody who would listen, you know? So I guess that's, you know, where my journey is now, because that is my mission with catholicsonline.net to, help increase exposure and really bring Catholics and ministries and business people together, bring Catholics together because we are all called for a purpose and we have this, you know, be who God meant you to be and you'll set the world on fire. So we're all called to do great things. So I like to connect people. <laughs> so you sure do. You sure do. Thank and you, you do an amazing <laughs> job. <laughs> That's right. I know it's all about your faith. And uh, I'm very grateful to know you because your uh, joy is really contagious. And I mean that. uh, I truly (laughs) mean that you are one of those people who... uh, That's such a compliment. Not really. It's a truth. Thank you so much. Uh, That's no lie. I think people who are watching who know you, they're thinking the same thing. (laughs) Oh, That's right. Thank you. (laughs) And, And so now I do want to invite all of you watching and listening on podcasts here to go to her website. Now she's got a couple websites. Yes. So the first one is catholicsonline.net. It's it's a beautiful mm-hmm. website. And on, right on the front page, it says, can the internet really help me find Jesus? <laughs> and I think if yes. you go through that website that you're going to find the answer is yes. 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 Uh, and they mm-hmm. have a, a terrific Facebook presence too. So why don't we start out with that one? I know we're going to talk about the other one, which is prayer, wine, chocolate. 
but maybe we can first touch on on uh, Catholics, Catholics online. online. What's that all about? I love the logo too. <laughs> Thanks. Get that mug. Um, yeah, this is our Catholics online. So there is another Catholics online, but we're CatholicsOnline.net. We actually started out um, the first website domain I bought for it was Catholic Social Media Influencers. Yes. Com. And then somebody said to me, whoa, that's a mouthful. And I was like, you're right. It is a mouthful. <laughs> so um, what, we, it, what it is really is people who are Catholic and have some type of platform. They could be a blogger. They could have a ministry. They might be a Catholic speaker or an artist, um, podcaster, YouTuber. Anyone that has an online presence is on this directory or invited to be on the directory. So we, um, and our directory, I write a lot of blog posts just to bring people in to kind of give a snapshot of who you'll find if you're perusing the directory. So we have gift guides, you know, because we have a ton of talented artisans and business owners that create these amazing gifts that really nourish faith in a way that is so creative. It, I, I'm thinking of the one now, Be A Heart, um, her name's Erica, and she now has a line, she has bibs, baby bibs that have the prayer before meals on it. And I'm thinking that's so wonderful because you're ministering to the, <clears throat> to the mother and father who are putting the bib on their child before they eat and you're reminding the mom and dad to pray. And, I, I, and everybody needs a bib, every baby needs a bib. So it's like practical yet inspiring. So you can find all these different Catholic gifts. So, and rosaries, you can find traditional gifts like rosaries, miraculous medals, things like that. But you can find these also just unique gifts that you probably, many people I feel don't even know these things are out there. So I try to, you know, um, get louder about them and <laughs> let everyone know that they're out there. But we also have just amazing Catholic authors and bloggers, you know, um, that are practicing the faith in their busy lives in, in practical ways. So, um, you know, especially now, like it's really hard to connect with people. Um, so online connection is so important right now because our community is, I don't know, depending on where you live, social distancing is very, you know, anti-community. It's, it's difficult, it's difficult. So we're trying to be a presence where we can still can connect one another and be united in Christ together and feed one another and minister to one another. Yeah, you're doing it so. some, a terrific job, honestly. Oh, you. you really are. Because I've known you now for a few years at least. Um, when I, I think it's been at least three or four years now since I met you. And, uh, and I'm just <laughs> it's so impressed. And uh, if you go to the website now, it says that there's authors, speakers, artisans, businesses, ministries and so much more so mm -hmm. um so what's it like for you working with all these wonderful people and what they're doing to help uh bring faith to others what's wonderful is that um you know sometimes i, I have my own blog prayer wine chocolate and uh, sometimes i share you know my own um i don't say revelations because <laughs> just my own you know my own faith i share that because maybe it'll help someone else. But when I'm working with all of these other bloggers and ministry leaders and artisans, I'm getting fed as well. My soul is getting fed and I'm getting ministered to. So here I am, I think I'm helping everyone, but then a, a blog post comes across my face and I'm like, oh, that one's meant for me. <laughs> I need to pay attention to that, that God's trying you know, to tell me something through someone else, which I think is, is really awesome. Yeah, so. it really is what it's all about, isn't it? Mm -hmm. About community. And yeah. I have to say, I think you came in at the right time. Who would have guessed three, four, five years ago that we'd be in a global pandemic? So oh. I do think the Catholics Online came in yeah. just at the right time. Because oh, you know God what? thinks of everything. Yeah. Right? And we can become friends with, really, I mean, friends yes, with people who truly. live all the way across the country and maybe even outside of the United States. I'm sure you've had some people join that maybe are yes. in the United States, the continental U.S. We do. We have Kiara, um, from the founder of Catholic Mothers, who's in London. We have someone from Panama, Jessica from Panama. Um, Rebecca, who lives in Poland. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Word is getting yeah. out. A I'll lot of Canadians, you. some Australians, it, I guess because of English, but we do have a Mexican blogger that is living in the United States. She's not a citizen. So she, um, her blog is in Spanish, but she's part of our community too. I think so, you're yeah. really growing. You are. Well, I mean, you know, we known, rise with grow. each other, right? We, 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 um, what's the saying? We rise by lifting others, mm. you know? So. Amen. You know, that's what we're called to be the body of Christ. We're, we're called to, to do that. We're called to lift up one another and therefore be there for one another. I mean, I, it can't be a replacement for, there's nothing like being in person. There's nothing like being yes. in person. So, um, you know, I'm so grateful. And you and I live in the same archdiocese. Like we can go that's to right. mass, but I don't know how it is everywhere else. I don't, I don't know if some places, you know, still have churches closed. I hope not. But, um, you know, thankfully, where we live, uh, we are so lucky where we live. We live in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. I don't know about your parish, but my parish, they have, if you want to receive communion on the tongue, they have a certain Eucharistic minister that stands by, they wash their hands in between every person. So I, I don't think everybody has that. And, and we really are lucky where, where we live, I think. At least I feel that way. I do. So. And I'm thinking in my own church. I'm a member of St. Mary's Parish in Schwinksville. And mm -hmm. Father Louis Bellapedi, and say hello if he's happened to be watching. Mm -hmm. But yes, he does the same thing. You know, at my church, there's the separate uh, extraordinary minister. It's actually their deacon, permanent deacon that right. uh, gives communion on the tongue. And as you said, mm -hmm. uh, washes his hair or uh, right sanitizes his hands in between so right all right. the details are there <laughs> right following all the blessing. rules but still uh, really accommodating really accommodating the people that's right so amen it's wonderful yeah. yes very happy to be a part yeah. of this archdiocese and very blessed and and just a shout out to those watching that if you want to learn more about the archdiocese <laughs> go to archphila.org i know that website because there's just so many great resources there and yeah. Uh, our wonderful, wonderful Archbishop uh, Nelson Perez, too. So very yeah. blessed to have him. Yeah. So, but back to Catholics online. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a little uh, sidetracked. No, no, that's okay. Digress. Okay. It's kind of fun <laughs> when we go off track a little bit. Yeah, now, yeah. the other thing with this Catholic social media influencers, can you explain to the audience a little bit about that um, and how that community works, too? Well, okay. So CatholicsOnline.net is a directory. So any Catholic or any Christian or anyone can go to CatholicsOnline.net and find inspirational content, gift ideas, ministries to support or volunteer for, um, speakers to, in, to have um, maybe speak virtually at, a, at an event. So um, the people that are listed on that directory, and there's close to 300, between 200 and 300 people, um, they are all in a group and we support one another. So right now we use the platform of Facebook in, as a group. So there's a group in Facebook that when you sign up for CatholicsOnline.net because you are a Catholic speaker or you're running a Catholic ministry, um, there's a group so that if you are sharing things on your Facebook page and it, the algorithms seem to be making no one see it, you can join a support thread and there's like 10 other people that will share your things or comment and that helps algorithms, which I know nothing about algorithms, <laughs> but it apparently is a thing. <laughs> it and is a thing. That's right. So we just try to help one another. We educate one another, you know, how to use Instagram, um, how to use Instagram better, um, how to use Facebook better, um, why you should use video, um, when you should use video. And just, you know, different marketing ideas, um, mainly social media marketing, but not always just social media marketing. Because um, if, if you're watching and you want to support small business, it really helps small businesses if you sign up for their newsletter, if you comment on their posts, if you share their posts on social media. But there are still people who are not on social media. So, you know, email, newsletters, and, and just telling a friend, you know, about these um, wonderful ministries that exist is helpful. Anything is helpful. Of course, purchasing it from, from them is great too, but it's not the only thing you can do. It's the, you know, we, small businesses don't have a huge budget for marketing. 
So we need, we depend on word of mouth and, and our email newsletters. Like when you give someone your email address, that's a big deal to them. When you open their emails and you click on their links and you become a, engaged in their content, that is very helpful to these small businesses. So please continue to do that. <laughs> oh, yes. I agree completely yeah. because uh, the viewers know uh, week after week we have a commercial for the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation, which mm -hmm. you can learn about at nonatus.org. We help yeah. families in crisis, especially those affected by divorce and separation. We offer spiritual accompaniment. So do please mm -hmm. check it out. But you're right. I learned all those lessons about the idea of uh, getting connected via the email because right. you're right. Not everyone is totally engaged in social media as much as some. Right. Uh, so those email addresses are very valuable to, uh, to people, especially like you said, small businesses and nonprofits. Right. Right. They really are. And just because you follow something on, on Facebook doesn't mean you're ever going to see anything they post because Facebook started out and free pretty much but now what facebook does and who can blame them you know it's a business is that they um hide a lot of things and they encourage small businesses to pay for ads you know they do. And that's you know if you're not paying for an ad you may not even though you have five thousand people that like your page that doesn't mean maybe 20 people see some things it's 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 getting tough for small businesses to use that platform but we still use it, you know, it's just, we just have to get creative and work around it and, you know, God will That's provide. Right. <laughs> that is completely true. I'm so. learning all those lessons myself, as I said, as a director for a nonprofit. So I like to take a moment just to thank the people who you are connected with on Catholic social media influencers and on Catholics online, because mm -hmm. your uh, faith and, and your ministry is enriching my life. And every time when I look at social media and I see all those wonderful posts and articles and mm -hmm. artisans. So I just yeah. want to encourage people to like uh, your Facebook page at Catholics Online. And the other yes. one is Prayer Wine Chocolate. I thought we'll spend the second half of the show talking about that one. Right. Um, is there anything else, though, about Catholics Online that you want people to know? Any kind of call to action there? Well, actually, yes. Um, if you are on Facebook, we have another um, Facebook page. It's called Catholic Shopping Bag. Mm, yeah. And um, especially with Christmas coming up, you know, you have your children, your godchildren, your nieces, your nephews, your friends. Um, we really, on our Catholic Shopping Bag page, really promote all our small businesses and our artists and our artisans and our authors, you know, because we have a ton of authors. So um, check out Catholic shopping bag and you know once in a while check again with the algorithms make sure you're commenting and sharing things because then it'll show up on your newsfeed more often and your friends will see it too so that um, you'll get some great ideas you really will I mean this really like I said practical things that have an element of faith and um, some great books some great great books and um, and then you know it's the time of year when you want to give you'll see the ministries that are doing phenomenal work that you'll want to be a part of it. You will want to give to them. You'll want to volunteer. You'll want to share their things because they're doing such amazing work. So no, it's a good point. It really is. Yeah. And the only way we can find out about ministries like that are through organizations like yours, because yeah. it's not like you turn on the TV or you see them in uh, certain news articles or, you know, promotional ads, you know, you right. see them at places like, Catholics online. So it's right. just a wonderful thing. And, and uh, I, I do ask people to please do connect with you. And that Thank would you. be yeah. so great. It would be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It really would. So and there's now, a ton of giveaways too. Like, real quick. Yeah. Tell us about that. Um, when small businesses have a giveaway on Instagram, if you enter that giveaway, first of all, you might win something. And second of all, you're helping that small business. Because um, through giveaways, small businesses gain exposure. Uh, often they tell you to share it or tag someone. So what you're doing is you're helping spread the spread word of the business through word of mouth. And um, plus, you might win something. You know, yeah, it's, it's always fun to win <laughs> stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, something you would have bought and spent money on. So 
You mentioned yeah. the holidays. I think it really is, honestly, it's a perfect time to connect with you, especially all those artisans and, uh, and all those authors who, it would be such a great way to evangelize. You know, this mm -hmm. is uh, Journeys in Faith and you're on Fiat yes. Ministry yes. Network. <laughs> I have to make a yes. shout out to our fantastic producer, Kent Kolhoski and Jennifer Sinclair, <laughs> who does a lot of our social media posting. And of course, my good friend, Bill Snyder. Actually, they're all my good friends, Kent, Jennifer, <laughs> and Bill. Uh, Bill is my co-host on Sewing Hope, uh, which Amy, of course, I said you were a yes. guest there. So yes. I want to just thank them because they are all sending this podcast and this show out all over the place, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. We're all over the place. And I just encourage people to share because when you share this video or when you share, make a watch party or share the podcast, you're helping Amy, you're helping the business, you're helping her okay. ministry. <laughs> yeah, so please Help me. So, um, share it out. Watch parties great. are great. So if you haven't yeah, done it yet, yeah. just click the watch party on Facebook now and share it with mm -hmm. all your friends. You'll get that notification <laughs> to great, uh, great. learn more about the wonderful ministry of Amy Brooks and also uh, Catholics Online. And <laughs> yeah, you said no, online. but yes. And <laughs> Catholics also, Online. <laughs> Catholics Online, did I say? Okay. Yeah. And also, uh, prayer, wine, chocolate. So yes. um, now we do have to take a short break. So we will be back in just a couple minutes with Amy Brooks. We're going to learn more about her wonderful work. So stay tuned here on Journeys in Faith. Hi, my name is Anne DeSantis and I'm the director for the St. Raymond Nonatus Foundation for Freedom, Family, and Faith. You can learn about us on our website at nonatis.org. I'm here to tell you today about two great podcasts that I hope that you will tune in. The first Tuesday of every month at eight o'clock, we have a podcast specifically for Catholics affected by divorce. From eight to 9 p.m. Eastern, go to Philly Nonatis on YouTube to subscribe. In addition, we also have a podcast the last Thursday of every month. That's also at eight o'clock Eastern time for one hour. And that one is for families in crisis. We have some really great guests coming up soon, so hope to see you then. Please also consider the fact that you can make spiritual direction appointments with us, with our spiritual moderator. All you need to do is go to our website on the contact form and just reach out to us. We'd be happy to hear from you and look forward to setting up an appointment. So we'd love to connect with you. Please share this video and let people know that we're there for families affected by divorce and also families in crisis. Thank you. Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network present the Discover Your Mission series. When I was young, in the 1950s, I attended Catholic Grammar School and I memorized the Baltimore Catechism. In fact, I think I got an A on all of my tests. Um, I faithfully attended Mass each week, not because I wanted to, but because I was afraid if I didn't, I would suffer eternal damnation. I followed all the rules. I followed my Catholic faith um, faithfully. But it wasn't until I became a wife and a mother and I began to try and pass my faith on to my children that I realized that everything I knew about Jesus was memorized doctrine. I can't even share with you how I was so wrote in my faith and I was attending this, but I was not present. I was a good man, I was a good father, I was instilling the sacraments into my family. Uh, I was definitely not intentional, I was stuck rope in my faith. But what kind of strength did he have? Jackie did not just have a strength of body or baseball skill. He had a strength inside of his spirit, a courageous meekness that empowered him to play the game work and I tell him what is going on with me and he's like oh okay and I'm like no 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 I think this is like some sort of miracle dude 
And he's like, okay, you know, of course, but I'll believe it when I see it, honey. You've been trying to quit and you've been saying this and saying that. And I'm, a, you know, he, his big line to me is, you shouldn't say things <laughs> because I never followed through on them. And so this was week after week, month after month. He is looking at me like, this is a miracle. There is no way that you, on your own, could have done this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 16 through 21, St. Paul compares the sacrifice of the Christians to the sacrifice of Israel and then to the sacrifice of the pagans. Paul calls the chalice the blood of Christ and the bread as participation in the body of Christ and then warns his listeners that you cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons at the same time. So in other words, you need to decide what are you going to participate in? Are you going to participate in the historic Christian idea of the altar of sacrifice, which is in the Eucharist or not? Welcome back to Journeys in Faith. Thank you so much for joining us here on this Friday evening. And as I said at the beginning, I have an amazing guest. Again, I have Amy Brooks. Amy is a wife, a mom, the founder of Prayer, Wine, Chocolate, and also Catholics Online. So uh, I, if you haven't watched the beginning of the show, please uh, do go back again and learn about her ministry called Catholics Online. Because right now we're going to talk about her other ministry. It's called Prayer, Wine, Chocolate. So Amy, please do tell us about that. Yes. So um, prayerwinechocolate.com is a blog. It started as a blog. Um, and the name Prayer, Wine, Chocolate, sorry, uh, it came from when I was in my 20s, there was a group of girls that I was friends with, about four of us. Um, that we got together on Thursday nights. It was the last season of Friends, and we would like do a potluck dinner, watch Friends, and we would pray the rosary because we were all kind of going through something tough. So, and it was pretty neat though because it, the four of us was it was pretty consistent. But people brought friends. Like sometimes it was like eight people, you know, all girls, women, and um, we would pray the rosary, but we'd also have a glass of wine some chocolate to snack on. And that time where before prayer, before we pray the rosary, we would say our intentions was so therapeutic. It just, well, the rosary too, it just calms you. Yes. Amen. So years and years went by. I remember like, you know, I was praying that I would get married. My one friend was praying she would have children. Years went by and then we were at my friend's house who did have children. And we were saying we should write a book because of all the things we prayed for. And, you know, where we are now. And uh, we're like, what would we call it? And somebody said, prayer, wine, chocolate. You know, I guess it was oh, around wow. that time. Eat, pray, love must have been out around that time. Eat, pray, love. So we were kind of just looking at and we're like, prayer, wine, chocolate. So um, when I went to start my blog, I actually was going to call it Raining Roses because I love St. Therese. Mm. And I've prayed the, um, there's a novena prayer where you ask St. Therese to pick you a rose from the heavenly gardens and send it to you as a message of love. And I've prayed that many times and she sends me roses. So um, that was my first thought, but that domain was taken. <laughs> so I couldn't oh. use it. And then I thought <laughs> prayer, wine, chocolate. And then when I told my husband, he's like, oh, that is totally you. <laughs> so I wanted to write about my faith, but what really motivated me to start a blog was that we were on an adoption journey and we were going to adopt without the help of an agency. And it was really a leap of faith. So I was doing a ton of research on how I could connect with life, pro-life groups and, and just ministries that took in women that were homeless and, and helping them choose life. Um, and different ways to just let people know if they were considering adoption that we were out there. And I wanted to document it all because I felt strongly that my husband and I were not in this the only people who felt intimidated by the cost of adoption, but called to adopt. So I wanted to share our story so that I could help other people that didn't feel like they had the funds to pursue a family through adoption. I wanted to help them. 
So I would write about that, but really what ended up happening is I started writing more about my faith. And God went, <laughs> you know, we had our son, Xavier. He was about three or four when I started Prayer Wine Chocolate. And he had to be three because he was four. So um, when he was four, <laughs> God brought our twins into our life. That's right. Amazing. Um, so it was kind of like God said, I, I, I am full of abundance. Why are you worrying? <laughs> you know, I'm not going to give you one baby. I'm going to give you two. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just, just amazing. Just That's really. Right. It's such an know. incredible story. Just getting to yeah. know you and uh, oh, you're so filled too. with faith. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, it's a, God always has plans when people cross paths. I believe that. Right. There's right. a reason for everything. So. Yeah. yeah, what a like great our friend Allison. Um, Allison, Allison yes, yes, she works for Wine Ministries and she mm. has her own blog, Reconciled to You. And she says, There are no coincidences, there's just God sentences, you know. That's so I true. That. Yeah, I don't know if she invented that word, but I'm going to give her the credit for it. The God sentences, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have God, heard that before, God but if she invented it, then congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> But we She'll make a shout out to her, place. Allison. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Allison, and thank watching. you so much for all you do. Yeah. God bless. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Now, on your website, I love it when you go to Prayer on Chocolate, the first thing it says is be who God meant you to be, and you will set the world on fire, Catherine of Siena. Uh, and then you, underneath that, you have the perfect Catholic mini retreat for tween girls. Maybe you can tell us about that. Yes. So, when I started writing my blog posts, I, um, I wrote this one story, which is was an incredible miracle. And I do feel called to tell everyone to pray the spiritual adoption prayer. So there's this prayer, I believe it was written by Fulton Sheen. And it takes less than 30 seconds to say. And basically you pick a name and you pray for a baby whose mother is considering abortion. Mm -hmm. So as you pray it, you're also praying for the mother you know, to choose life. So we were praying that prayer, my family, and this huge miracle happened. Um, I'll have to link it, you know, it, a huge miracle happened. Basically, I met the woman who was praying for her baby outside of a Planned Parenthood. Mm. So I wrote about it. And when I wrote about it, a man named Jerry Winley Doust read my story, contacted me, said, this is a great story. I want to help you edit it. And we became friends and I, I said, oh, you're a publisher. Cause I could tell from his own website and you know, we just got to know each other and he was a publisher. And um, I said, I, I had an idea for a book like 17 years ago. <laughs> like, you know, I said, it, could I pitch it to you? And he said, oh yeah, sure. So I went, I found my old prayer journal where I had this idea for a book for girls like in sixth, seventh and eighth grade. And the title of the book, which he helped me publish originally, but now it's with our Sunday visitor, is That's Be right. Yourself, a journal for Catholic girls. I so, love it. I've seen and, the book before. It's amazing. Yeah. So that book was meant to be. Like, I mean, it's, all, it's amazing how God is this great orchestrator. Because when I started the blog, I, I wasn't even thinking of that. It was something I jotted down in the back of a prayer journal, like over a decade before. Mm. And, um, yeah, so I, I wrote it and Jerry, Jerry, he owns Grace Watch Media. You got to check out his stuff. He's, he, uh, he wrote a couple books, 77 ways to pray with your kids. Um, yeah, so he's a great guy and he really, it, he made it happen. And, um, so that book now is ranking in the top 50 for children's journals on mm. Amazon for children's inspirational books on Amazon and children's prayer books or something. There's three categories where it's been in the top 50 for the past year. So it's really resonating with parents and their daughters. And I've met some girls that, um, that have the journal and they're like, we love it. And one mom said, um, she wants another one. <laughs> like she wants it. Oh. Um, and she, I think she bought it for her again. She said, Oh yeah, I like comparing my answers from last year to this year, like how my answers change. And, um, so it's, it's a journal for girls that allows them to share their worries and their inmost thoughts with God. But it also has a social aspect, almost like a teen magazine aspect where it has like quizzes and, you know, what's your favorite song and 
who's your yes. favorite celebrity? And then why don't you say a prayer for your favorite celebrity? So it, it bridges their life and what's important to them and it connects them to their faith. And um, it's fun. I, I, I remembered what was fun at that age and I made sure I included it. So because faith can be fun. And um, as soon as I wrote that, so that last blog post is helping because some parishes have used it with groups of girls. So I just, I have actually gone and done these retreats with like, like a dozen girls or so mm. before COVID, but you can do it social distancing as well. I put that in the blog post. So you can, you can bring girls together that age in a group, introduce the journal, do a fun craft with them that is actually designing the back cover of the journal. We left it blank on purpose and gave them directions on how to design it themselves. So as soon as that came out, everyone's like, where's the boys journal? That's I right. Like, I remember this. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not here yet. Yeah. So the boys journal came out this year. Yeah, so, I know. And a lot of help from Jerry and we have this great, um, graphic designer, the same graphic designer did the boys and the girls. Her name's Laurie Nelson. Mm. Like her studio's Agape design. So, um, you know, cause there's a lot of artwork in it. There's coloring pages and just place things to doodle on each page. There's a lot of artwork in it. So Laurie Nelson did the artwork, the graphic design, the cover. Yeah. How great is that? Hey, well, with, the, with the holidays coming up, aren't these great books for your tweens? Absolutely. And for your nieces and nephews or for a gift for someone, right? I mean, yeah. some kind of a, a gift for Pollyanna or something like that. Yeah. And uh, what's great about really them awesome. is that, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm no, that's sorry. okay. That's fine. <laughs> well, with the feedback we're getting, and this is what brings me such peace and relief and like, oh, thank goodness, that the kids actually like the book, mm. you know? So um, Kristen Brown, I don't know, Kristen Brown does the portrait of the saints. She like takes pictures of people. Yes. And I, have, like, paintings. I've seen that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So she bought one for her nine-year-old and he said, this is the coolest book ever. Did he? Yeah, I was like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that, that people are really, um, Sarah Estabrooks' son, she got it, her son's like 10. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was like, you have to give me that book. I have to take pictures of it before you write in it. And he was like hugging it. He like didn't want to give it to Mine. <laughs> yeah, so it's just so nice. Oh, and I gave it to the kid up the street. And he's like, I said, do you like it? Because he's the first person I gave it to. I said, do you think it's good? He said, I think it's great. <laughs> Like, mm. I love you. <laughs> so what a relief because with the girls journal, I was like, this is fun. You know, you know, I, I, I think it's fun with the boys. I was a little nervous, you know, because, you know, yeah, we because uh, yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. but it's needed, isn't it? I mean, yeah. in the development of character and virtue, especially for, for young guys and, and for girls too, of course, women and, mm -hmm. and men. Uh, young women and young men who are developing their characters. Oh, just couldn't be better. Yeah. And you know, it's been interesting through this journey. I've found that a lot of men do prayer journal, mm. like grown men. I'm um, Gary. You know, who's, what's Gary's last name? Gary Zemeck? Yeah. He had a podcast and um, I forget what it was called, but one time I wrote the benefits of prayer journaling on my prayer wine chocolate box. And he got in touch with me and had me on his podcast because apparently that's something that really helped him through his life was prayer journaling. And um, John Canuthia, I think he's big on, um, he's another Catholic speaker. He, um, he's big on prayer journaling. So it was neat to know that um, prayer journaling is definitely something both men and women do and find helpful. Yeah, and so, it's, a, it's a keepsake yeah. too, isn't it? I mean, because it's not something when you prayer journal, most of the time, at least I know for myself, I'm not inclined to get rid of those books. I'm inclined mm -hmm. to keep them because right. that's what I wrote, say, 15 years ago or whatever. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, right. When I was in that part of my brain, you know, yeah. way back when, well, it's, it's neat, neat to go to back. See, right, what you prayed for and, and how God worked it all out, you know? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, you see how God worked things out. So yeah. is there anything else about prayer wine chocolate that you like to share? Oh, I, need, uh, I try to do a lot of Catholic fellowship. We, I was having, um, every year I was having a retreat, a prayer wine chocolate retreat, and it was just yes. one day. Um, but this year, if anybody wants to pray, it's really tough this year 
So I still wanted to do it with social distancing and everything, but um, I'm, I'm hitting some walls, but I'm also hitting some open doors. So I don't know what exactly is gonna happen this year.